everyone. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. We are starting the Stitching Raccoon Sampler. Uh, so we'll be stitching this all this week and we might go a little bit over into next week. Uh, so I'm going to start off by showing you how to trace the design. Uh, if you got the free PDF pattern uh, and then I will go on to use the kit. So we do have a free PDF pattern uh, that you can download of this uh, design that we're going to be working on today and then if you need all the supplies we got that kit for you uh, as well so thanks again for joining me my name is Alyssa thomas from penguin and fish where we make cute embroidery kits for beginners and i'm here every weeknight at 8 30 p.m central time and it's a time that we can relax and craft together so all right you guys let's get going here <laughs> a little blurry here there yeah there now i can see you guys <laughs> all right all right, so I'm going to zoom you guys way down here right away. Okay, so there we are. So uh, this is the pattern here, and uh, it is a stitch sampler. So that means we have a bunch of different stitches, and we're going to learn all those stitches. These are 14 kind of basic stitches, and then... Uh, um, all those stitches are up here as well. So I think what we'll do is we'll learn a couple and then we'll go up here and stitch them for a little bit. And then we'll come back and learn a little bit more and then stitch those, learn a little bit more. And we'll kind of go through back and forth through the whole process a little bit. Then when we get all that bottom done, we'll, we'll finish up everything that we didn't finish up on the top. So uh, I, I think we'll just keep kind of jumping around here. So, all right, here is the PDF pattern. So this is, uh, I printed page six of the pattern out. So if you guys got the, the free PDF, this is page six. Uh, you know, make sure that it's the right size. If not, you can shrink or enlarge this however, however big you want. The nice thing about the PDF, the free PDF, is that you can decide what you want to stitch. Like if you don't want to stitch this, you just want, you know, the raccoon, you can do that. Uh, but all right, so I'm going to start by just showing you guys how I normally kind of trace a design. And I do that with PDF patterns typically. Uh, sometimes I'll actually print it onto this product here, which is, it's called Stick and Stitch. You can actually print directly to, uh, it's kind of like a paper, and then it, it's, it comes off uh, like a sticker, and you stick that onto your fabric and then you stitch right through it. That's great if you have a PDF because then you don't have to trace at all. You just print it right onto this product. But the easiest, simplest, cheapest way to go is by tracing it. So now normally I would do this with a bright window um, or a light table, um, but just to show you guys here, I'm gonna just do it on, on my table. I think my fabric I can see through enough. So this is, uh, again, this is that printout of page six. And I'm just using some painter's tape. You would just tape this to the window. I'm just gonna put a couple pieces down here. And then you put your fabric over the top and uh, center it however you want and then give that some tape as well. And again, you'd still be on your, on your window here. I know it's a little bit difficult to see here, but I can actually see it enough to trace it. And I'm not going to actually trace the whole thing tonight, um, but I just want to show you the two things that I, that I use. Uh, I like using this um, water-soluble ink marker, and all it is, it's like a blue, thin-tipped um, marker that comes off with water. So you can stitch your whole thing and then spritz it with some water and uh, uh, it'll go away. So you won't have any residual lines on here. So you just go ahead and trace the design right on there. And you just go until you had the whole thing traced. So you can kind of see it's the, like a, a lighter blue blue color here you know if we go trace like the main the main um, guy here so definitely taping taping uh, your piece down is super duper helpful when you're tracing 
and I would just go through this whole thing and uh, trace the whole thing with the blue, the blue uh, marker here. So the other way I like doing it is, um, you know, if I'm tracing it, is just with a mechanical pencil. I think these work super duper duper well. Oh, Gretchen, yes, for sure you can enlarge the design. Feel free to shrink or enlarge the design to whatever size you like. Um, ooh, I might not have any lead in here. Let's see. Eh, I can kind of feel it. <laughs> Always the bummer of mechanical pencils. All right, oh, there we go. Okay, so what I like uh, with mechanical pencils, it, it, and this is just like one of those cheap like Bic pencils, it, it just gives a nice thin line. And uh, again, you can just trace, trace the design. And uh, because it's so thin, your stitches are gonna be big enough to cover it. And it'll actually fade a little bit as you start stitching because your hands will be touching it and, and all that sort of stuff. So again, I would just kind of go through the whole thing and trace it really nice. And you can always have the, the file open nearby so you can see it um, just to make sure you're, you're getting it all, getting every line. But so this is this is the definitely the easiest cheapest way to do it just get a printout and uh, trace it onto your fabric i'm using just like a cotton muslin fabric right now uh it's just a simple just a real simple fabric you can get it at joann's or, or anywhere where it is. really we, we have squares of this in the shop too if you like this kind but it's just a muslin and uh, i like it because it's easy to st stitch through. Some some fabrics are so tightly woven that they can be a little bit difficult. But all right, so I would just kind of go through this whole thing um, and I do the lines and stuff down here as well. So we do have some names on here like chain stitch and you know straight stitch, all that. If you want those to be more permanent, uh, you could use a... Uh, uh, like a micron, a micron pen like this. This is a permanent marker. It'll stay permanent on fabric as well. So you can just uh, write uh, right on top of it the, the text for it. Um, so both we have both these, um, we have the fabric, the uh, markers in the shop if you're curious about those. But again, super easy just with the pencil and then you're good to go. So go ahead and trace the design. Uh, I am going to... Um, actually use the kit. So it's it's totally free to just get the pattern, but if you want all the stuff, um, we do have a kit available as well. So I'm gonna actually open up the kit because uh, it has all of our thread in there and it actually has a pre-printed fabric um, piece. So instead of taking all the time to trace tonight, uh, I just wanted to show you, um, you know, my favorite ways of doing it and then then we'll we'll just use the pre-printed piece. So here here you go. You can kind of see the starts of my little little tracings there. I think this would be great blown up. This would be actually really cute for like a coloring book or a little poster, something to color to. Uh, but yeah, Gretchen, you can totally make it larger, um, in, like enlarge it on your photocopier or print it out super big. All right, let's grab the kit. Yeah, and anyone popping in, this is a free pattern, so there's a link um, either, if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook, there's a link right in the in the um, text. Uh, if you're on um, TikTok, in my profile link, it'll get you there. So, all right, I'm going to just shimmy sham all this out of the, the box here. Okay. So, we got ourselves a pile of floss and uh, um, a cute little ribbon to use for decoration later or to, to hang it up. Um, we got an embroidery hoop. Those are helpful <laughs> to hold your fabric in place. Uh, we got ourselves a needle. I'm actually going to get, I have a little magnet, little magnet here, a little needle minder. I'm going to just plop the needle on there. Um, it's just so I don't, so I don't lose it. I like having that magnet nearby. So I'm just going to, he's going to live up there. All right, we got our little instruction sheet. So this is if you're just getting started with embroidery. There's this cute little book booklet um, 
uh, that uh, comes with it. So how to finish it, uh, that sort of thing. So uh, helpful guide and best practices to getting started with embroidery. That's in there. And then uh, we have the printout, uh, or we have the uh, design. It's all pre-printed right on there. So that's great, then, <laughs> then I don't have to spend time tracing it. And then we have our, um, there's a separate sheet in here for all the stitches that's used. So that's 14 different stitches uh, with images and then uh, like text on how to do it. And then we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to do that. We have videos for all this, these as well on, on the website. Ah, oh, Gretchen says these new kits are the bomb. That is so great to hear. <laughs> I'm really happy with that. Uh, we've been working hard on these these new kit designs. And then here's the um, stitch guide. So here you'll see uh, where to use what stitch, you know, feather stitch, that's the Queen Anne's lace leaves right there. You know, long and short stitch is the tulip. And then also you have um, the, the colors here. So like fresh basil, lime peel, uh, those are some of our um, Penguin and fish uh, floss here, our little pocket skeins, uh, embroidery floss. So those are, those are the colors you can um, uh, put with these. Yeah, so I'm gonna have this nearby as I stitch, because uh, I'm gonna need to refer to it uh, all evening here. <laughs> uh, and and yeah, then we have the stitch guide here too. So this will be next to me here. I'll keep looking at it, and uh, let's prep our uh, embroidery in here. So you feel free to give this a little press. I suppose we could. I'm gonna just, um, I'm gonna put it face down. And uh, I think my iron's still a little warm. I'm just gonna try and get a few of those little bits out. You don't need to iron it too much. Uh, it's actually probably good to maybe put a paper towel down. Um, just in case you don't want to transfer this design because this is an iron-on transfer you don't want to like transfer it more <laughs> to your ironing border or anything all right let's uh get this open so this actually this design is actually a little bit bigger than uh, um our normal uh you know eight inch designs so not all of it's going to fit in the hoop at once but that's totally fine you can move the hoop around as needed um, and that's what we'll do. I'll be stitching a little bit down here and then I'll kind of move it up uh, when we stitch up top. That's, that's fine. Okay, so I think we will start doing a few stitches down here. So we have the straight stitch, the seed stitch, the running stitch, and the back stitch. So I thought we'd kind of work on those four just to start out down here and then we'd come up back to the top and look at where all of those are in here and then stitch those for a little bit. Um, and if we did that tonight, I think that would be pretty good. So, all right, I'm gonna put the smaller inner hoop underneath. And again, we'll be moving this around and we'll press it when we're done. So it's gonna be okay that, you know, that I'm covering up, you know, some of, that I'm cutting it off, right? It, that's fine. So I'm going to oops, I'm gonna just tighten that up and you can move the fabric around, just get it so it's um, taut. You don't need to stretch it, but just get it so it's nice and even in there and then you can tighten it some more. All right, so there we are. Um, okay, so for the straight stitch, um, that's the blue. So that is, that's the denim wash color. Again, I'm just, I'm, I'm looking at here, so I'm, um, you know, I can look here. Uh, where is the, the blue? Okay, so right here, it's pointing at the blue. So that's denim wash, that's uh, this color here. And uh, that's also for the straight stitch and the seed stitch, we'll be doing that. All right, so I'm gonna just shimmy sham these off. Um, the only other thing you'll need with the kit is, is a scissors. I mean, I have just this embroidery scissors. You don't, you can use whatever you want. Oh, Laurie says, wish I had the kit now. Oh, but I'm afraid it would take forever to get to Canada. Ugh, yeah, that's always a question mark um, for sure. Um, you could start with, I mean, if you still want it, I mean, you know, <laughs> it would get there eventually, but but yeah, uh, that's always a question mark, how long it takes to get through customs and all that. All right, so I'm gonna cut 
a piece that's about 24 inches. That's kind of my go-to length. And uh, the, so the directions say, if you see right up in the corner here, it says use three strands of floss. So what that means is um, this is embroidery floss. So six strand cotton embroidery floss. That's kind of what you'll see. Like DMC is a brand that's popular um, that you you know might have heard of before. Uh, so what it's made up of is six loose strands. So six strands that can totally come apart. And the reason it, uh, it's easy for it to come apart is because in embroidery, you have the opportunity to stitch with um, as many strands as you want. And that'll give you different thicknesses of, of strands. And actually, <laughs> we have, here's an example. So, uh, um, for example, this floss is all six strands of embroidery floss. Um, so I haven't, I didn't split any of it for for that. However, this thickness guide that is just a single, single strand of thread. So just like one of these out of the six gets us gets us um, that. So look at the difference between the floss and this thickness guide text. It's so different, uh, and so. What that means is there's lots of opportunity for artistic decisions, right? <laughs> so, and here's here's my little guide. There's one strand of floss all the way up through six, and then here's um, some other different kinds of, of thread here. But one through six is the six strand embroidery floss. Uh, so for for this particular design, uh, it says use use three strands of embroidery floss, and um, that's a guide if you wanted to use less or more that's fine uh, there's enough floss in here that you should be able to do three strands very comfortably and you know have a lot left over all right so to get the three strands out uh, you know it's a common thing that people just grab three strands on either side and and pull but that can actually that actually <laughs> can cause a lot of knots and it's just annoying to do that and you might like you know have to hold the end in your mouth and pull it's just kind of a a, a lot um but for me um what i like doing and this is a relatively new thing that i started doing um i like separating just one strand and i hold it in between my fingers and just pull and it'll gather, it only works if you do it one at a time. So it'll gather up behind you like so, which looks crazy, it's gonna be a huge knot, but the moment you uh, get the strand out, it completely releases. I just run my uh, fingers through there and you know, we're good to go. So, you know, if I was doing that to speed, I'm just gonna grab another one, zoop, and always needs a sound effect. And here's, here's another one. There we go. <laughs> so that's that's actually it seems excessive that you have to separate them all at all one at a time, but it goes so much faster than trying to pull the three strands at once and it tangles way less. So now I'm just kind of putting them together and just running my hand through them. I'm just kind of get them all together again. Quick question, will you be carrying this shape antique oh you know what i do have one of these so i i have some antique uh antique um embroidery hoops in the shop i scourged ebay for them and, and i had a couple um i do have one that's uh, a round one like this but i'm kind of looking for more so i might have that shape at some point i i'm keeping my eyes out for them otherwise we have like some cute little small um vintage ones uh, how did you know I just separated my floss? Oh, by holding it in half and the ten, two ends in your mouth, Sharla. I that's how I did it for years and years, and then someone told me how to um, do it this way, and uh, um, I'm like, gosh, that seems like a lot of work. But then I'm like, oh my god, this is so quick. It is so super fast to do it that way. Um, so, <laughs> yep, <laughs> putting the three strands, or put it in your mouth and stretching those three strands in either hand. I definitely done that before. All right, oh, maybe I should show you guys that quick. So I'm, this is my pinch method, not my method, but this is the method I use uh, to thread the needle. So I, I'm not licking the end or holding it far away or anything like that. What I might do though is snip the end just so it's nice and clean. So there, now I got like a nice, clean, sharp end. I use the pinch method 
so I um, I get it in my fingers and I just pinch and I just slowly unpinch so as I unpinch the moment I can see any sort of color in there any thread I'm gonna take my needle and put the eye of it right over and then kind of push down and then continue to open my fingers and it'll kind of push the thread through and then you can kind of grab it like that so that's that's uh, the pinch method um, I love doing it that way uh, we do have like needle minders now too so uh, um, I wanted to show you guys if you have, haven't used a needle minder before um, so what you do with a needle minder it has this little kind of metal I don't know this little metal filament there and uh, since it's stiff and not like floppy like thread it's theoretically easier to uh, thread through the needle there so I have it the needles hanging on it and it has this kind of bent open uh, area here and you stick through that open space you stick your oops you stick your thread through that open open space in the um, in that wire and then you can pull it through the needle like so. So that is uh, a needle threader. And those are all over the place and stuff too. We do have these super duper cute ones though in the shop. I love these. <laughs> I think we have a couple of those left. Uh, but yeah, so if, if that pinch method isn't working for you and you want the support of a needle threader, uh, we do have like these kind of basic needle threaders. But again, let me just show you the pinch method again. I love, love the pinch method. So I kind of get them together squish them a bit and as I unpinch the moment I can see the thread I get my needle over there and just push down grab the thread and we're good to go all right to start I'm gonna just tie a knot and we'll we'll go over this a little bit later but for now I'm gonna just tie a knot and um, I, I want to I'm gonna start with a straight stitch but I'm actually gonna put the knot um, from the front to the back like way over here uh, we're actually reserving a piece of thread for later, and uh, um, it's called an away knot. Um, it'll make sense in a bit. Uh, but just know that I'm just reserving a piece of floss for later. I want to weave in the end instead of tying a knot. Okay, so a straight stitch. That is our first stitch here. Uh, a straight stitch is basically coming up at the beginning of the line and going back down at the end. That is a straight stitch. And it seems almost silly to do, right? So up and then back down at the end. But it is so often used. I mean, it's basically the building block for almost every other stitch. Um, I use it if it, I just have like one little line. So like the needle, for example, um, is, gonna be, is gonna be the straight stitch later. All right, and a, a seed stitch is basically lots of little uh, straight stitches next to each other. So I'm just gonna come up at the beginning. This can be used for fur. I use it for fur pretty often. Uh, it's traditionally used as padding under like a satin stitch. So a satin stitch is a nice kind of glossy um, stitch by putting a bunch of stitches right next to each other. And sometimes if you want a little bit more poof to that, you can put some some seed stitches underneath it. But I just kind of keep it more decorative. I kind of use it as, as fur. Or like jimmies or um, sprinkles on, a, on like a donut. That'd be a good use for a straight stitch. Uh, Lori's asking what size needle I'm using. This is a size 5 embroidery needle. So embroidery needles are a little bit different than cross stitch needles. Uh, they both have the big eye so you can easily um, put thread through them like that. Uh, or like floss and fat embroidery floss. Um, but it has a sharper point than, than a uh, cross stitch needle. Because cross stitch needles you want a blunt tip because you don't want to, like cross stitch fabric often has that, those little like holes all ready for you to stitch in. Um, an even weave fabric is what that's called. 
so you don't want to pierce you don't want to get any of that you don't you don't want to pierce the fabric you want to just go in those holes so the blunt tip is nice but for embroidery you do actually want to pierce through the fabric so sharper a sharper bit so if you're having trouble pushing your needle through the the um floss you or through the um, fabric you might be trying to use a, a cross stitch needle instead so I'm just kind of going up and going down with this. The other way you can do it is go down, um, you know, I'm just the same, I'm going down at the end of the line, but you could come up in the same motion at the next one. So I, I'm finishing this first one and then coming up at this at this next one. Uh, so that's, that's called the sewing method. We'll do some more of that as well. And then I can just go back down for the last stitch. All right, so that is, we got the straight stitch, the seed stitch. Okay, I'm gonna do the running stitch and the back stitch, and then we'll hop up here and we will put some of these into action here. Um, but I'm, I'm also done with the blue right now. Uh, the straight stitch and the seed stitch were, were the blue color. Um, the next color is, is gonna be a brown. So what I'm actually gonna do is, instead of weaving, or instead of tying a knot, I'm gonna actually weave the rest of my thread in the backs of some of these stitches. So I'm gonna actually do that three times. I'm just kind of trying to grab as much thread as I can. And then I can snip that, snip that away. What's nice about weaving in the ends is then you don't have piles of knots on the back um, for your thread to catch on and all that. That's, that's not fun. Yes, so Gretchen, cross stitch needles are different. Um, I don't think I have one of those on me, but they have a blunt end. I mean, my uh, these are our embroidery needles. They're not super duper sharp. Like they're not gonna, you know, kill you. But um, they are sharper than your typical um, cross stitch needle. So it, it's called a blunt point and a sharp point. So cross stitch needles have a rounded, like they, it's like sanded off almost. It's a rounded, uh, dull point um, called a blunt point um, so that, that's the difference otherwise it's it's basically the same you got the big eye um, but yeah so this is a size 5 embroidery needle if you're if you're looking for some and we got those in the shop too if you're um, looking for them uh, otherwise you can get them at Joann's or, or anywhere size 5 embroidery needle you can sometimes get them in packs with all different sizes all right so I'll save that blue for later um, we still have this blue, this, this guy up here. Uh, so what I'm going to do with that, I'm going to actually snip away this knot. This was our thread that we reserved for later. And here we are. And I'm going to just weave that, um, into the backs of these stitches as well. So I'm going to try and jump all the way over here. I might not have enough here. I should have probably waited until I had the running stitch in and then I could have woven in, in those stitches, but let's see if we can get them in here. All right, one, two. Again, this was so we didn't have to tie a knot at the beginning. All right, so I might not have a knot enough to turn it around, but if I don't have enough, I can actually go through with the eye of the needle instead of the tip if you're running too low on your floss. That might get you just enough more. There we go. All right, so th the three times. There. So now we don't have any knots on the back. It's super nice and clean. Uh, that's kind of going to be my game plan for the rest of this year. All right, let's do the running stitch. So that is with this brown color. That's with the teddy bear fabric or thread floss color. Okay. So again, I'm gonna get my uh, 24 inches or so, my go-to amount. Just estimating. Doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing's gotta be perfect. All right, so uh, again, we need the three strands, not the six. So I'm gonna separate just the one. So I'm gonna do this um, separation technique again where you just do one at a time. All right, so separating the one, holding it um, between my fingers and zoop pull it right out. I run my hand through there just um, to get it all straight again. Second one. And I'm gonna isolate one. There we go. Three. 
There. Way easier and faster than trying to pull the three apart and stick it in your mouth. It does seem like, like, ugh, you have to do all three at once, and or, like, individually, and it seems annoying, but it actually is, like, so much faster. All right, and these ends look a little fuzzy, so I'm going to give them a little snip. And we'll thread the needle again. There we are. And I think I can just weave into the backs of these stitches, and then we'll just jump jump to the beginning of the line here. Um, normally I wouldn't kind of like jump that far, but for this we're gonna just we're gonna jump around a little bit more than I usually do on on an embroidery. But I'm still not gonna put any knots on the back because I hate when like I hate when you have like a knot over here and then like your thread gets caught on it and so it's stuck on the knot and you've been stitching for like an hour and then realize that ugh you got all these big loops that are stuck on the backs of knots. That's annoying. So this um, weaving in gets rid of that. That. All right, a running stitch right here. It is basically a cute little dashed line. That is uh, the running stitch. So I'm going to start at the beginning of the row. I'm going to show you two ways to do this. So this is this is um, one way that you might think of doing it. Just uh, going up and down, just like how we were, was do how we were doing the straight stitch and the seed stitch. So this will get you the effect of that running stitch. But the faster way of, of doing a running stitch, and it works really well if you have a nice straight line, is by using the sewing method. And if you stitched the um, embroidery of the month with us last week, there was a whole lot of these running stitches. So um, to do this method, it's easier to have your fabric a little more loose in the hoop. So I'm just going to kind of push on it. You can see it got it got a little bit looser. We'll, we'll tighten that up again. But um, if you go in and out in the same motion, so at the end of the first stitch and the start of the next stitch, and you can actually do it more than once, you can go down and up again. And I'll probably just do that many. So there's there's like two going through there at once, right? I can just push the needle through. And there we got we got both of those stitches in one one get go. So let's do that again. Down up. This takes a little practice to get get things even. Ooh, let's see if we can get one more. Ooh, there we go. So we got three that time. But I do think you can get more accurate lines so your like little stitches aren't like shifting a little bit. So I do when I can I do like doing a running stitch like this. But you get just like the cutest little dashed line. And if this is too difficult to do it this this way, then uh, for sure just um, do one stitch at a time. That's totally fine. Um, you can do, there's there's a lot of uh, running stitches in here, so you could practice uh, a couple different ways. So, so get used to it down here first, and then you can pop up to the top and um, practice it up there. There, so now I'm just gonna go up and down, just kind of how we did the straight stitch and the, and the um, seed stitch. Yep, Gretchen. Uh, Gretchen's asking. I guess quilting stitches are running stitches. Yep, exactly. Oh, they're so cute and little, though. I love the little dashed line look. I mean, think of all the things that you could do a dashed line for um, in a design. Like right now, I'm just I'm using it for like a, the tree trunk, just some decorative things, but. You know, it'd be cute, like if you're doing text or something to put a little line, a little dashed line, or um, just if you wanted like a lighter feeling line, you could do that. All right, so that's done. And it's a little dashed line on the back too, which is cute. So I'm gonna just weave in the ends again because I, I don't need this thread anymore. Actually, I might just jump up here. Let's, let's do that. We'll just jump back up to this blue, put some more back here. Two, 
two, three. Okay, I wanna do one more stitch from the bottom here, and then let's put these into practice up at the top. Uh, the one thing that I, the, the thing that I like about this embroidery sampler in particular is that you can try out the um, stitches right in a real design right away. Like it's not just like, here, learn some stitches. It's here, learn some stitches, but then let's apply it right away. Like how can you actually use these stitches in real life? So that's, that's um, what I like about this. All right, one more, uh, let's do the back stitch. So those are like kind of my four kind of basic go-to beginner stitches, I guess. So, all right, back stitch. That's gonna be probably uh, the more advanced out of, out of these th uh, these four that we're doing now. So this is with the, the red, so um, the Northern Cardinal thread floss. So let's get our 24 inches or so of that. I know it's enough, like I don't need 24 inches, but I'm gonna use it all up, up here and stuff later too, so. If you just needed to stitch that much, then you don't need to get 24 inches. You just need, you know, seven inches or something. All right, so let's separate our threads again. I'm, I'm gonna consistently use three strands of, of thread, of floss through this entire piece. But like how we talked about in the beginning, different number of strands can give you different thicknesses. Of, of the stitch, so feel free to experiment. Like maybe you want, you know, maybe you want these little uh, four leaf clovers to be extra, extra broad leafed or something. So you might want to use six strands of floss or maybe you want like the little grasses to be like super duper thin and dainty. So you might want to use one strand, you know, there's, there's opportunity for um, some texture and to happen with uh, just the thickness, the number of strands that you use. But I'm gonna be consistently using using three. All right, I'm gonna weave in at the beginning of this running stitch. Are you gonna embroider the text above the stitches? Yep, I'm, oh, no, no, no. Am I gonna embroider this little text? I'm, I'm not. So if you are getting the, uh, um, I do recommend that they, be there though. Um, if you are going to um, use the PDF pattern, so uh, I showed you at the beginning how to trace. So this is, I, I was tracing with like pencil here. Um, so this is from the, the free PDF pattern. So I'm using the, the kit, but the free PDF pattern, um, you basically have to trace. So it has this text on here. What I would just do is get, um, you can get these like permanent markers and uh, I would just write it on. And you know, it wouldn't hurt to just trace like right on top of these. Uh, for the, um, for the uh, pattern that comes in the kit, it's semi-permanent. So it will, it will fade significantly by at least, you know, 50% if you do get this wet, um, but it won't go away permanently. So if you are planning on getting this piece wet when you're done, then I'd go ahead and I'd write with that permanent marker on top of um, the stitches. But no, I'm not gonna stitch that. That's, that would be, that's just a little too teeny tiny for, for me to stitch. All right, I'm gonna weave into the backs of these stitches, which can be a little bit more difficult. We don't have that many stitches here. So let's just get a few started. All right, so that's, one pass. Let's go back the other way. Two. And three. And we will be working on this uh, every day this week. Uh, so if you're just popping in at 8.30 p.m. Central Time, we'll be uh, continuing this project and we're gonna work on this until it's until it's done here. All right, so back stitch. So for a back stitch, we're actually gonna start a stitch forward. So we're not starting, we're not starting at the beginning this time. We're starting one stitch forward and I'm, mine are about, yeah, a little bit, 
like an eighth of an inch, maybe a hair more than an eighth of an inch. They can be really whatever size you want. You can make them real small or you can make them even, even bigger. I sometimes am inconsistent. Like sometimes when I'm going around tight curves, I'll make them real small. And if I have like a nice straight flowing line like this, I'll make them a little bit bigger. But so this is about my size here. So I'm not starting at the beginning. I'm starting one stitch away and then I'm going backwards. So I'm going back to the beginning. So I'm going into the start of the line there. All right, so that's our first stitch. Uh, for the next stitch, I am going to come up one stitch away from, from the, the end there. So right about there. And again, I'm going to go backwards. And I'm going to go backwards um, to the exact same hole that that last stitch is coming out of. So right in the same in the same spot right there. All right, and that's our second one. So all we're going to do is continue along the line going backwards into the same hole until we reach the end. And I, I love this stitch. This is my go-to outline stitch so whenever something needs a cute little outline you know so basically the whole raccoon basically is going to be outlined in this stitch and a lot of these other eh, some of the other bits will be outlined in this stitch as well i just think it has the cutest little beady look like you can see every little stitch in there i just think it's just awfully sweet so that is my go-to so we'll stitch to the end of this line and then I'm going to shift. Let's go up to the top and I want to stitch a little bit of that. Um, let's, we'll, we'll put these four into action up at the top. So I think that's how we'll, we'll do these next few days. I will hop up and down. Um, I probably won't do four next time. We'll do like maybe one one or two or maybe just one and then put it into practice and then come back down and do the next one and put it in practice but um just for these these first four i thought we'd do a few and then we can hang out up top for a little while and we won't finish um all the stitches at once like there's a lot of back stitch up here but we'll just do like one threads worth or something and then um, come back down to the bottom so we can keep learning stitches and then when we're done with the bottom and we have a lot going up on up here we'll we'll just stay at the top and finish finish everything else up which will be fun because we'll we'll have to remember how to do stitches that we did earlier in the week and that'll it'll be good just jump around a little bit all right so as I get to the end one thing that I like doing is kind of mentally estimating or calculating like how many more stitches I can do. So if I divide this in half, like from here to here, if I divide that in half, then I'd be like, okay, I'd have um, two stitches that big. Or should I divide it into thirds? Okay, if I divide it into thirds, then the, my stitch is a little bit smaller. Um, so do I want a hair bigger or three smaller ones? So I'm mentally thinking that as I approach the end to all my rows, like, okay, do I want to do two more stitches, three more stitches, one more stitch? Uh, I think in this case, let's just do two. So I'm going to split that right in half. But yeah, I'm always thinking that as I get towards the end of the row. How many more stitches fit in there? All right, there is our pretty back stitch. So we got our four stitches. We got the straight stitch, seed stitch, running stitch, and back stitch. All right, so let's weave in the end. I mean, but look at the difference between, you know, a running stitch and a back stitch. Two totally different looks. And in a design that you're working on, you might want those two totally different looks um, in it. So like, we'll, we'll be doing this tree stump with the uh, dashed running stitch there and then the back stitch will be the outlines of the character so they should jump out a little bit more against the background it's a little heftier line so all right weaving in three times again and we can snip right on the end there
All right, there's our four stitches. So I'm gonna take this out of the hoop and we're gonna move it up. So I'll be I'll be moving the hoop around quite a bit throughout this piece. Let's put it right there. So I'm just gently kind of going over these bits that I've stitched already. So and then I'm tightening the hoop, and then we'll just kind of gradually, gradually kind of pull on it a little bit. All right, and I'm constantly looking back at my instruction sheet here. So this is in the PDF as well, the free PDF. Um, all right, so what we got here, so right here, we have our little straight stitch, like a, a, our little line there. So like a straight stitch, a straight stitch are like single short lines. So like his little legs, you know, that little needle. Um, those are our straight stitches. That's what we did, did first here just like an up and down stitch. And then we got our seed stitches that I did a little fur for that. So we'll start working on that fur. And uh, um, we actually might do both of those at the same time because they're both like that black. So we might do our little stitch and then go right to this um, seed stitch. And then we have uh, the back stitch or the running stitch. So we have the running stitch over here on the um, tree stump here. And then all of these other lines that you see here are all like around him are all gonna be backstitch as well. Um, and, and these lines around the eyes are backstitch too. And actually the little circles are also backstitch. So we might, we might do a bunch of that black right away and then jump over here with the brown and do this, do the running stitch. I think that, I think we can do all that tonight yet. Yeah, let's see. All right, so let's get some black. We'll start filling those in. So this is that ink color. I'm still gonna get my 24 inches. Where is the end? It's too dark, can't see it. There we go. Oh. Okay, so 24 inches, roughly. All right, let's separate our three strands. I'm gonna bump the end there again, just to separate, um, just to try and isolate one. And zoop, pull that out. Let's get a second one. This is, definitely does not work. I've tried <laughs> uh, pulling more than one strand at once. You just get a jumbled knot of crazy. And definitely run your fingers through the group of it again. That, that helps it from bunching up. All right, so there's our three. Just kind of lining those up again. Running my hand through there. Oh, got a little bunched up at the bottom. There we go. And let's just get ourselves a nice clean end and we can thread that. I'm gonna use that pinch method again. go. Uh, so I'm going to do that on reserve knot again. So we did this at the beginning. I don't have any stitches to weave in the back, but I still don't want to start with a knot. So I'm going to do something called, it's a, called an away knot. It's a type of waist knot. So we're, it's a temporary knot that we're going to put there. And I'm going to go, I'm going to start with that straight stitch there, but I'm going to go like maybe four inches or so away from it on the front of the fabric. Again, we are just reserving this floss so we can weave it in later. All right, let's start with the straight stitch, our first stitch on top. So it is this, um, this little needle. We're gonna come up at the start and we're gonna go down at the end of the, the line. A simple little straight stitch. There we go, that's it. That's like our straight stitch down here. That's all there is to it. Um, you can kind of see this black, um, on the back here, we're gonna actually snip that away and weave it in when we're done, so we won't we won't see any of that. All right, next up we have the seed stitches. So that is um, all these little lines are all gonna be seed stitch. So let's let's just start with uh, this guy here. So we can do it where we go up and down and all the way through, and then come back up 
Or we can do it where we uh, try and do it in the same motion. So I could try and go down at the end of this one and then come up at the next one at the same time. That works too. But my go-to way is just to go uh, the stab method where I just stab it, go all the way down and then come back up. I think that's fine too. I like doing that. So we're just putting his little furry furs in there. You could actually fill the whole thing with a uh, little um, seed stitches like this and it'd be really, really cute. And I don't always do all the same stitch and then move on to the next one. Like right here would be a good opportunity to do some back stitch as well. So let's, let's finish these seed stitches. I kind of like finishing an area and then, then moving on. All right, so we finished the little seed stitches in that in that eye there, um, but there's a little bit of black, a black line going around his eye, and that's gonna be the back stitch. So we learned that, so we can do that already. Um, this is back stitch as well, but it's a different color, so we'll we'll wait on that. But this this back stitch we can do, and then we can jump up and do a little bit more. So we'll start like a stitch into our line. So this is the back stitch now. Oops, yeah, felt like I had a knot, but we're good. I'm gonna go back down the line to the beginning of the line. All right, that's our first stitch. And I'm gonna go up the line a little bit more. And then back towards the line and I'm gonna go in the exact same hole that we started at. There you go, that's that's the first two stitches. It's gonna just, it looks like it's just gonna mush into these um, seed stitches, but that's fine. Um, we're just giving it a little bit of a definition around the outside of his, of his eye. Fun. Fuzzle stuck there. And around, like when I go around tight little curves like this, I tend to make my stitches a little bit smaller because then they kind of appear more like it's a curve. Because um, really, uh, stitches are straight lines, right? So if you angle each of those straight lines just a little, then it starts to imitate a curve. Versus if you have longer lines, then it's more like a diamondy shape. So the more, like the smaller little stitches around curves, the more it's gonna look like a curve. All right, two more stitches here. One and two. Okay, so there we got the back stitch. I think I'm gonna go ahead and do the eye right away. So the eye, I'm gonna kind of make like a hexagon shape. So these are gonna be like little stitches as well. So I'm starting on one side, we'll, you can make them like maybe a diamond shape, that would work too. I like, I like hexagons for these little, little eyes. So I think I'll, I'll stop the black right now with, with this eye and uh, um, then I'm going to jump to the running stitch because I want to still, still do all the four stitches that we did today and then we can come back and do some of this stitching later. So I might actually even weave in the ends even though I know I'll, I'll want to work on this later. Like I could just keep going. But we are just going to start learning the stitches um, as we do the bottom stitches and then we'll come back and we'll just finish finish all of it. So we're just kind of testing testing the stitches we just learned, learned now. So there we go. We got a straight stitch. We got some seed stitches. We got the back stitch. 
And now let's jump over here and do the running stitch. So I'm going to actually weave in this end just so I don't have thread hanging out everywhere. So three times through the backs of the stitches. Okay, and then remember our, our little away knot here. Let's snip that away now too. And uh, um, weave in that as well right away. So we did that because we didn't really have any stitches in the area, so that's why we're doing the way net. All right, so next up, uh, I gotta get some brown for that running stitch, and we do have brown already cut from when we did the running stitch at the bottom. And you know what? We have these stitches here. I think I'll just weave into these right away, and then we'll just jump over to where the running stitches are. So let's... Um, Here's a nice big piece of, actually let's use the smaller one. There, we have a little smaller piece here. Gonna thread that using that pinch method. Let's weave in the backs of these puppies again and jump on over to the running stitch. All right, there we are. So in this piece at the top, the running stitch um, is are the, just shown in these lines in, in this tree stump here. So let's jump to this one here because it's the closest one to um, where we wove in the end. And again, you could just go straight up and down, like making a bunch of little stem or a bunch of little straight stitches in each one of these, or you can do that weaving method, that sewing method, and um, we'll do that later. Uh, it is a, so this is a free pattern. Uh, so in my profile, if you click the link in my profile, it'll take you to where you can download the free pattern. So it's a free printable pattern. So uh, you can print it out and then uh, trace it to a piece of fabric. Um, like I started to hear uh, at the beginning. Uh, otherwise, we do have it available as a as a, a full kit. So that has the the floss and everything in. That's what I'm using now to stitch, and it comes with it pre-printed. So you can either do it yourself for free, or we do have uh, full kits available as well if you wanted to um, skip all that tracing and just get get at it right away. <laughs> Uh, but but it is free, so if anyone wanted to give embroidery a try, uh, go ahead and grab that free one. You also, with the free pattern, you also get um, 14 days of stitches. So that's you get 14 emails with how to do each of these stitches. So there's videos for each of these stitches too, and now we're just we're doing it live here too. All right, so I'm going to do that sewing method now for the running stitch. So I'm going to come up at this line here just because these are some nice straight lines, so we can get like better, I think, running stitches with um, on straight lines if we do them, if we weave them. So I'm gonna loosen the fabric again. It gets, it's a lot easier to do a running stitch with looser fabric. That's a that's a new discovery that I've had. So I, I'm, I'm way happier with my running stitches since um, making the fabric a little looser. So I'm gonna go down at the end and come up at the next stitch right away. And down and up. And I think we can do that one more time. The more you do this, the like more it gets harder to push the needle through because it's just going through all that fabric at once. But it is fun to magically have like a zillion stitches all at once and that are all like perfectly straight. So that is that is the fun part of the running stitch for sure. And it's just it's faster too. It's a little harder to get accurate um, lines, but it actually gives you a little bit straighter lines though too. I think. Oh, I hope so, Lori. Uh, Lori says, I've done hand embroidery before, but I think this will give me a lot more confidence after following along. Oh, for sure. And there's, we have, um, you know, guides for all of this with photos plus video and uh, um, everything to help you out. And then if you still have questions, I am always here. I'm, I'm here every weeknight. Um, so I'm 
more than happy to answer questions. All right, there's one of our little rows. Look how cute, little dashed line that's so sweet. All right, I'm gonna do one more here, and uh, I think we'll probably call it a night. Actually, man, I'd really like to get all these running stitches done. Maybe we can stay a little bit longer and I can, I can use up this floss. I'll go till I'm done um, with this floss, for, or done with the running stitches, whichever comes first. That shouldn't take too long. It's always a bummer to leave right in the middle of uh, stitching, isn't it? But these little running stitches go real quick. I get the last stitch in there. So I, I, I'm moving the hoop around quite a bit. You know, I'm not stitching vertically anymore. I'm moving it quite a bit because when I do running stitches, I really can only do it from right to left. Like, I, it's awkward doing it in any other direction for me. I'm sure there's pros out there that that are great at, at it. I think I'm going to get all these little ones down here, and then we'll stay up here for the running stitches because these are just technically not really running stitches. These are kind of maybe some more straight stitches here, right? Let's just grab those while we're kind of in the area. Oh, we're totally gonna have enough thread for this. Awesome! Okay. Let's weave that in. Yeah, so I can really only go right to left. That way works best for me. So again, just a reminder, this is a free pattern and I will, uh, you can download it. It's a PDF, um, grab some fabric and trace it onto it right away. And I'll be here stitching it all this week. So, um, uh, and probably a little bit of next week because I think it'll take that long. All right, our last five stitches here. And I think I'm gonna have to, I don't think I can load up any more than that. So we're gonna have to do it in two bouts. All right, and just finishing the last one by going into the back of the fabric. I'm gonna actually tighten it up while I'm here too. There we go, all our running stitches are done already. So we finished a whole kind of section on this already. Uh, but there we go, we, we have four different stitches in here. The little straight stitch, the seed stitches, back stitch around the eye. It looks like a lot of the same here, but I mean, it really is, you know, all the stitches, most of them are made up of just all the little variations of the straight stitch here. Then we got the little running stitches over there. Oop, I almost lost my floss here. I'm gonna weave in the ends quick and then we'll, we'll trim. And I'm weaving in the ends so I don't have any knots on the back. It's a little trickier for running stitches because there's not much to weave into. It's also tricky when you're near the edge of the hoop. And I'm gonna actually take it out of the hoop, I think, in the in the evening. Um, it'll help reduce, um, like, crimping on the edges. I mean, we'll, we'll press it when we're done, but still, it'll help out a little bit. Especially since we're, we're crimping some of our um, stitches that we already did. It'll be nicer if I just take it out and let it lay flat. And then we can come back uh, tomorrow and start fresh again. So there's my hoop. I'll just set that aside for now. But there we are. So there's the start. So again, here's the four stitches we learned tonight. Uh, we got the straight stitch, seed stitch, running stitch, and back stitch. And we've put them into use up here. Obviously, there's lots more seed stitches, lots more back stitches to do. Uh, we'll, we'll eventually get to that. But I want to keep going through the stitches each each night so we can so we can do that so all right uh, next up is the split stitch so we'll we'll probably do the split stitch and then we'll come up here uh, to do the split stitch here so let's see the split stitch oh the Queen Anne's lace stems so all of these green stems except for these little leaf things are the split stitch so we will pop up here right after we learn it tomorrow we will jump up and do 
the split stitch and then uh, then we'll be able to do more so after that is the stem stitch and uh, the stem stitch uh, are, is used for these leaves and stems of the tulip so we'll at least for sure do those two and hopefully we can do the next one as well so that's the blanket stitch uh, down here cool all right you guys so that is it for the night. I will be back here again at uh, 8.30 um, 8 p.m. Central Time uh, tomorrow, and we will work on a, on this a, a hair more. So I'm really excited about how far we got tonight. I know it doesn't look like much, but we're going through all those stitches, and soon we will have like a really nice uh, finished thing here. So again, go over uh, to the link that's uh, either my profile or if you're on YouTube and Facebook on um, the link that's in the text and uh, download your free pattern and uh, you'll have it all ready for tomorrow then. And like I said, we'll be here for a while. Uh, these lives are gonna stay on YouTube. Um, so you'll always be able to watch some more of them. So awesome, you guys. I'm excited for this week to continue to work on this and uh, I will see you tomorrow. Have a fabulous evening, everyone. Good night.